You want answers? I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. You want answers? You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! And you have offended a Shaolin temple. You can't handle the truth. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Rob of the All right, folks, compassionate Idaho volunteers that you've met on this show, Lindsay Reinhart and Isaiah Valdez, who also happens to be the executive director of Idaho Normal, were featured in coverage of their campaign to pass a medical marijuana initiative by Boise's News Channel 7, a.k.a. KTVB, the top-rated news channel in the largest metropolitan area in the state. And also where I happen to grow up, I watched KTVB News all the time. And they should be ashamed of the biased, scaremongering piece that they have produced. I'm going to play some video for you. We'll interrupt it from time to time to get my commentary. ...to next year's 2012 election, and there is a movement underway in Idaho to legalize medical marijuana. States all over the country are talking about the issue, and there is an aggressive effort now in the Gem State to put it on the ballot for a vote of the people. News Channel 7 Scott Evans traveled to a regional state where medical marijuana is already legal. Idaho, a family-oriented state where people help their neighbors and compassion is common. Hi, sir. Would you like to sign the Idaho Medical Choice Act? It's a, Isaiah it's Valdez it's a hopes to capitalize on Idaho's compassion. He's a volunteer for Compassionate Idaho. I appreciate it. A grassroots group working to legalize medical marijuana. All right. Now, first thing here. Notice the use of the word capitalize, a verb meaning to take advantage of, according to my dictionary. This opening could have been, Isaiah Valdez believes Idaho's compassion for others will lead them to support legalizing medical marijuana. But using the word capitalize, oh, it's such a competitive word, conjuring frames of opportunities that you capitalize on and businesses that capitalize on opportunities and, well, of course, capitalism. I don't have a reason for medical marijuana. I'm just doing this for the compassion of other people. And Valdez has a reason to believe others would have compassion as well. In February, Boise State surveyed 525 Idaho households and found 74% would support terminally and seriously ill patients to use and purchase marijuana for medical purposes. Lindsay Reinhart works with Valdez. They need 47,500 signatures to get a medical marijuana initiative on the November 2012 ballot. This is about giving people the compassion that they deserve. The marijuana policy. All right, all right, now uh, let's get to this. Uh, here at this point, uh, we are at about one minute and 19 seconds into this piece, which is about six minutes long. And that's it. That's the end of the reporting on the people who are trying to get medical marijuana legalized. Now, interestingly, they asked Isaiah what his reason was for supporting medical marijuana, but not Lindsay. See, Isaiah is a healthy young man, but Lindsay suffers from multiple sclerosis. And I personally watched her testify to the public in Ontario this summer where the pain was on her face for three hours because she had to abstain from her cannabis use. And it's not as if the Idaho television stations aren't aware of this fact. I go to their competitor, Channel 12, KTRV reported this in May. Reinhardt says she takes more than a dozen pills for pain, nausea, and nerve damage caused by her multiple sclerosis. She questions the long-term side effects of that medication, including opiates and narcotics that have proven to cause damage to the liver and kidneys in patients. What's more, Reinhardt says independent research shows evidence that the medical use of cannabis, or high-grade marijuana, helps curb the symptoms of multiple sclerosis, helping to eliminate nausea and other pain-related conditions. Would it cut down on her use of painkillers? Quote, if I could use medical marijuana, I could probably eliminate or significantly reduce my intake of narcotics, end quote, Reinhardt said. So, KTVB ignores an incredibly salient point. One of the people they're interviewing about passing medical marijuana is a poster child for the kind of legitimate patient Idahoans are currently willing to throw in prison for using the most safe and effective medicine to ease their pain. Instead of talking a little bit more about Lindsay and her sympathetic case here, they spend almost all of the remaining 70% of the piece reporting from Fort Collins, Colorado, interviewing cops and addiction specialists and school teachers about the perils that await should Idaho open the door to medical marijuana. 
Democracy Project, a national organization, is efforting a state-by-state -state legalization of marijuana, and in this video targeted Idaho for 2012. Idaho, as you can see, is already surrounded by states where medical marijuana is legal in some form. The people of Colorado voted to legalize the drug in 2000. Up until a few years ago, the number of people who possessed cards allowing them to own marijuana for medical purposes was low. In 2008, the state went to a dispensary model, selling marijuana in storefronts. In the past maybe two or three years, we've started to see the rise of real uh, uh, commercial marijuana dispensary uh, businesses. Fort Collins is a college town in Larimer County. Marijuana cards have increased 1,400 percent in the county in just three years. There was no change in the health of our community, but the number of users, when the supply showed up commercially, we saw the users go up. We've had an epidemic of chronic pain amongst our 20 to 4 year old males, a public health concern uh, <laughs> unprecedented. Scoot Crandall has been working in the Fort Collins area for over three decades. Much of it Yes, he's the executive director of one of these uh, anti-drug organizations. That's, that's interesting sarcasm there, Scoot. Uh, kind of how, like, uh, erectile dysfunction only affects 2.6% of middle-aged men, yet when Viagra hit the market, it's reported that up to 9% of men aged 18 to 31 had used it. But strange, we rarely ever hear any county sheriffs or drug counselors concerned about that recreational use of a medicine by healthy young men, despite the fact that Viagra abuse can kill, unlike marijuana. Now, indeed, there probably was no change in the health of the community. Like other communities, it likely has many people suffering from some form of chronic pain. The Institute of Medicine reported this year that, quote, chronic pain affects at least 116 million American adults, more than the total affected by heart disease, cancer, and diabetes combined, end quote. So, the thousands in Fort Collins who suffer from pain didn't change, but their ability to access a safe, non-toxic remedy for their pain did. It is no more surprising that a medical marijuana dispensary would be popular, that medical marijuana would be popular when dispensaries open, than we'd be surprised that a water fountain in the Sahara has a big line. Spent in substance abuse prevention. We've never seen the amount of marijuana in our town before. Area schools have noticed that increase. In a letter to the Fort Collins City Council, Jerry Wilson, superintendent of the Poudre School District, said the district has seen the number of drug-related expulsions increase from 13 to 40 since 2008, a 300 percent increase. Wilson went on to say that students were expelled for either purchasing, selling, or possessing marijuana. All right, what a junk, junk statistic that is. How much more have you been shaking kids down for pot? Have you increased drug dog patrols? Have you instituted drug testing? Because you seem to be inferring that medical marijuana dispensaries have led, have led to a tripling of marijuana use among teens. Now, if we actually look at the facts behind this, the National Survey on Drug Use and Health numbers show an increase in monthly teen cannabis use, now a teen defined as 12 years old to 17 years old, an increase in Colorado from 9.1% of teens using monthly to 10.19% of teens using monthly, and that is the greatest rate found in any of the United States, and it is an increase of 12%. However, it is difficult to pin this on medical marijuana in general or dispensaries in particular. Nationally, the rate of such monthly use increased 4.6%. Not all of those states had medical marijuana. In California, a state with dispensaries, they also got a 12% increase, similar to Colorado, but Montana, until recently a state with dispensaries, saw only a 2.3% increase, which was below the national rate. Arizona, which didn't have medical marijuana at the time, had an 11% increase, and Maine, which does have medical marijuana, saw a 6.2% or 6.7% decrease. Don't see it as anything dangerous. Statistics from the Colorado Department of Public Health show over 121,000 Coloradans hold marijuana cards. 94% say they need the marijuana for severe pain. It's disturbing. Well, uh, this is another junk statistics when they say 94% of the patients need marijuana for severe pain. Uh, it's the same trick they try to pull here in Oregon to convince people that almost all medical marijuana cards are from people trying to fake it for pain. Uh, here's the way that this works. As the department's website notes, this is the Colorado Department of Public Health Medical Marijuana Division, quote, 
Severe pain accounts for 94% of all reported conditions. Muscle spasms account for the second most reported condition at 19%. Note that percentages do not add up to 100% because some patients have more than one condition." End quote. Cancer causes pain. Cachexia causes pain. HIV AIDS causes pain. Multiple sclerosis causes pain. People using medical marijuana in Colorado for conditions other than pain total 45,527. That's 37.5% of the patients saying they need medical marijuana for reasons other than severe pain. As for the 62.5% or more who use medical marijuana solely to treat pain, so what? They had a visit to a doctor and they got documentation of their condition. They had to show chart notes to a clinic to verify three years worth of treatment for that pain. They paid $90 million to a state. That's almost $11 million this year alone. As we mentioned above, millions of Americans suffer from pain and they're consuming 30 billion doses a year of over-the-counter NSAIDs like Advil and Aleve, including 70 million prescriptions for stronger NSAIDs like Celebrex. It is estimated that more than 100,000 Americans are hospitalized each year and between 15 and 20,000 Americans die each year from ulcers and gastrointestinal bleeding linked with NSAID use. We've got a very nice community here. Um, people have worked really hard over the years to build a quality community in Fort Collins. And I see that starting to come apart with us being the pot capital of northern Colorado. Citizens against the dispensaries gathered enough signatures to put a measure on this year's ballot banning dispensaries in Fort Collins. Just kind of seeing through the smoke and mirrors, it does look like it's just become uh, a front for recreational use. They vote on the measure on November 8th. About an hour south of Fort Collins is Boulder, where the University of Colorado is asking marijuana outlets to stop advertising to college students. We had medical marijuana dispensaries directly uh, appealing and marketing to our students, our new students, our freshman students coming in. Just last month, the Boulder City Council reacted with an ordinance making it illegal for marijuana dispensaries to advertise use other than medicinal. We thought it was self-evident that medical marijuana was for medical purposes. But Boulder Mayor Susan Osborne says the movement is not about medicine. It's a lot about money. For $200, Coloradans can buy a card that allows them to legally possess marijuana. You now, 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 wait a minute. Not just any Coloradan can walk into a door somewhere and throw $200 on the counter and walk out with a medical marijuana card. That's not how it works. And it's definitely not how the Idaho program would work. University freshmen were open about this issue. How hard is it to get marijuana around here, even if you don't have a card? It's pretty easy. Are people that sick? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> what do you think it is? Recreational. What do you know yeah, about... Yeah, let's ask a bunch of 18-year-old college kids what they think. <laughs> As if any college kid on any campus in America has any difficulty scoring a dime bag now. As if CU Boulder wasn't already the site of the nation's largest 420 smokeout long before any dispensaries existed. Medical marijuana cards. They're really easy to get, and it's just... Some people need them, but some people just want them. Some use the drug to self-medicate. It helps them sleep, or like... They just like it at the end of the day, like help them calm down, you know. So like they found their own way to like use it as a medical thing. Boulder and Fort Collins are adapting as the marijuana industry grows in their communities. Once this gets started, it's a it's a train that's hard to slow down. If you open the door on the medicinal, what's sold as medicinal, be aware it was opening the door to recreational use. Be afraid! If you allow a suffering person like Lindsay to ease the excruciating pain she feels from multiple sclerosis by using medical marijuana without threat of arrest, why, a freshman at Boise State might smoke pot. Never mind that one in three of those freshmen are smoking marijuana this year anyway. It doesn't matter how many more people suffer if we can stop one adult from lighting a doobie. Idaho's future has yet to be written. It's about medical marijuana. Compassionate about Idaho it. hopes that whatever the future holds, marijuana will be a part of it. It's time to stop arresting patients. It's time to stop arresting people that have marijuana for personal medical use. Scott Evans, Idaho's News Channel 7.
Idaho's initiative, the Idaho Medical Choice Act, would allow people with a debilitating medical condition to possess marijuana. They would need to be allowed to possess two ounces or less of usable marijuana. The law would also allow them to own nine plants. To see the entire act, we have it available for you online at KTVB. Yeah, online. And let's point out some of the things in that act that you failed to point out. Uh, the fact is that we're talking about two different states here uh, to start with. But uh, let me get to a couple of these things. Both Colorado and Idaho's proposal would allow two ounce possession. Uh, Colorado only allows cultivation of three mature plants, three immature. Idaho would be five mature, four immature. Uh, Colorado requires strict verification of one of eight qualifying conditions. Uh, Idaho has the same eight qualifying conditions. But that's where the uh, similarities end. Uh, in Colorado, they have a commercial dispensary system that any legal patient can go to, whereas Idaho would require a nonprofit dispensary system that a patient would have to register and could only go to that one center. And in Colorado, there's no statutory limit on how much marijuana and how often can be dispensed, whereas the Idaho dispensary, the one you're allowed to sign up and go to, may only dispense to you two ounces of marijuana at any two-week period. <sighs> Talking about Idaho, and you want to do 70% of your story dedicated to Fort Collins, Colorado. <sighs> Shame on you, KTVB. We love the earth. This is Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. Take it on, come on time. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down smooth.